Hi, my name is Brian Dessentels. My occupation is a performance consultant. Good way to say it. I first got involved at HPT back around 1980, so good, almost, geez, almost 30 years ago. And I did it because I was working in uh, Detroit at Harper Grace Hospitals, um, and I worked for Kathleen Whiteside, who was heavily involved in the Michigan chapter, as was uh, her boss, Frank Weidra. And uh, got me involved in it and got involved in the conference we had in Detroit about 1982, and have been involved ever since. My greatest HPT influences. Uh, was probably um, uh, Gary Rummler and Danny Langdon, uh, who taught me more about looking at uh, people in terms of the systems that they exist in. And uh, I was an instructional designer, and uh, I was certainly influenced uh, by Maker's work at that point. But then when I saw that it wasn't effective, the training wasn't transferring as knowledge into the workplace or as skills, uh, wasn't as effective as it could be, I began to look at the bigger picture. There was a lot more to performance than just knowledge deficiencies. Uh, an interesting application of HPT that I was involved in was intended to address a uh, turnover issue at a uh, large software company in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they were having turnover of about 18 to 25 percent. And, uh, you know, that, that was new to me because we didn't look at turnover as a performance issue. But a performance system is never designed to cause people to leave. We don't design systems that cause people to get injured. We don't uh, build systems that uh, fail to reach the deliverable. So it's an interesting application. And uh, as I began to uh, look at that, uh, we wanted to certainly reduce turnover. Uh, but what it was, it was on the, it took place at the uh, end of a period of time in which the software company's stock had gone uh, into the upper atmosphere, and people who were working hard were uh, were well paid. They became five-year mil uh, millionaires. Uh, and the intention was that they would work. 80 hour weeks for five years, uh, make a million dollars, and then go on and have their real life. Um, the stock dropped precipitously, and people were not millionaires at the end of the five years. And though they liked the work that they were doing, they uh, you know, had other considerations such as family and living life and uh, going out and climbing mountains and so on. Um, so they stopped working those 80 hours, and deliverables stopped being met. And this turnover rate was uh, caused more by managers wanting to fire people than um, them leaving. And what the managers failed to realize was that the reward system had changed, had changed performance. And what they thought was sustainable was not sustainable uh, at, at all. So getting into those applications where we help managers realize what uh, was uh, the real issue, which, which was a resource issue now, uh, that they tried to manage by way of uh, rewards wasn't working and we were able to solve that. I uh, hope that's a quick uh, story. The HP term I'd like to define is performance system. Performance system is not synonymous with the word process. It is not the same thing, though we focus a lot on process. A performance system is, is organized to create a deliverable. It pivots from the deliverable. The performance system is comprised not only of the, def, uh, of the deliverable requirements, but the process, and the required knowledge, skills, and attributes, and the resources, and the employee who's executing on the whole thing. So the uh, term that I'm talking about, performance system, and recognize that who owns this is not the employee, they're a component in that system, but by the manager who owns the deliverable is held accountable for the deliverable, is rewarded by the accomplishment of the deliverable, owns the entire system, and we have to work with them. I think that's uh, what I think a performance means and who owns it, and who is our, ultimately our customer.